Guten Morgen. Good morning. It's Penny Wilder, Black Pen. Sanbona ni nonke makai pene limnyam sibolunsund. Um, I just want to read a tweet or an X post that I made for you guys or that I wrote yesterday. Um, no, I wrote it actually this morning out of frustration. But before I get to it, I'm going to be speaking in Vanderbilt Park tomorrow in Bupilong, Bupilong in Vanderbilt Park in the Val in Gauteng and then on Sunday I'm going to be in Chablani uh, in Soweto in Gauteng, Johannesburg speaking there as well. Both uh, sessions are actually geared towards men. It is very important that men attend these sessions. Uh, if you're on my social media you will have seen the posters um, and I'm quite excited to be addressing men. I'm going to be there with other really really great men. Tomorrow it's just a couple of guys that are organizing free entry and then Sunday it's organized by Tibuho. Uh, Lirole, I think is his surname, Edward Billion on Instagram, uh, who's become a huge GBV activist and a huge activist to empower men. People like DJ Sbu, Joshua Maponga, Kenny Gunene, Torani Kumalo of Sizoktola. Um, some other great, great men are going to be there addressing Amachita, trying to find solutions, man, to the issues that we have, specifically as men in South Africa and more particularly black men in South Africa. Also, just need to give a word. There was a story trending yesterday on X about Uente Mloch, or who's receiving 50,000 Rand in child support, child maintenance from Black Coffee. Um, I believe from their divorce settlement, she's also getting an additional 15, 1, 5, 000, 15 000 Rand in spousal support for herself. That's 65,000 Rand that she gets a month. I do not know if the 50,000 Rand for the kids includes or excludes school fees. Because Black Coffee has said in the past that he pays for his children's fees. It's two children, by the way. He's got an older son, I believe. But he's got two children. And then you obviously, as expected and very sadly, a lot of women saying that Black Coffee is stingy. You know, there are rumors on the internet that Black Coffee charges about 100,000 US dollars per gig. When he comes to South Africa, he does us a favor. And he charges much less. But there are rumors that this guy makes maybe 50 million rand. A year if you divide it i mean could be four between four and five million rand a month that black coffee makes of course probably half of it goes to tax and sars but the fifty thousand rand and i had to explain to a lady when i posted the story the fifty thousand rand is for the children's needs it's not meant to be based on how much he earns just because i earn a million rand a month therefore i must give my children two hundred thousand a month for what that's when kids start doing dumb things like snorting cocaine buying expensive cars and crashing them. The children go to school. They probably go to private schools and a decent private school in Johannesburg is probably five to 10,000 Rand a month. Five to 10, let's say 10,000 Rand, which is 100,000 Rand a year. This is for his two kids, by the way. So my assumption is that they each get 25,000. 10,000 Rand a month for their school fees. These children do not consume realistically more than 5,000 Rand in groceries and snacks per month. 5,000 Rand for each child. And then there's a 10,000 Rand left over. Whether it's to get Ubered, whether it's to go to the movies, whether it's pocket money, whatever, that's 25,000 Rand. That's a lot of money. Now, people that are like, he's so stingy, the guy earns so much. For what? It's because you guys lack financial literacy and you don't know how to budget. And most of you are actually even living beyond your means. I've said before, 20%. It's a ridiculous percentage, but this is what's staying in your lane is 20% of your money is what you should be budgeting for your children. That means if you earn 10,000 Rand a month and you have two kids, that's 2,000 Rand, 1,000 Rand each. If you're earning 30,000 Rand, 20% of that is 6,000, if I'm not mistaken. Three, six, 6,000 Rand a month is 20%. If you've got two kids, that's 3,000 Rand each. Too many of you are living beyond your means, sending your children to schools that you cannot afford, schools that are largely going to teach your kids things that are not important. We need to stay in our lane. And I need to give a shout out to Black Coffee for supporting his kids. What makes me sad is that Uentle Mlocha earns as well. There are rumors that she earns about 60,000 Rand a month from her acting and other things on the side. Why would she need an extra 15,000? Of course, you'll say Black Coffee got her accustomed to a soft life. But realistically, in the real world, we also need to relook these marriage agreements. We need to relook divorce settlements. You've got someone who's earning well, who's making their own money. Why do you need to support them beyond? They divorced. Once you're divorced, it cannot be that you're still earning the perks of being married to me. You lose out, unfortunately. I may pay you if maybe you are doing certain things for me, cleaning the house, looking after the kids, 
cleaning my laundry, etc. But if you already had one teaser, a helper, to do those things, what am I paying you for? Because then you just become a sex worker. And I can go and buy another sex worker. I can get another girlfriend, another wife. So it's quite sad. I've made a video before about Umbalen Klem Lodjo when they were initially having their issues. But it's their relationship, it's their marriage, it's their, it's their marriage, it's their divorce. Black Coffee is probably happy to be sending the 65,000 rand. I don't know again if it includes or excludes school fees. Who Aunt Em Lodra is still carrying on with her career. She's doing well. So we're happy for them. But it's just something for us to talk about and to learn. I heard rumors that Kanye West sends the equivalent of, what was the amount? Millions. Let's say about 4 million rand a month to Kim Kardashian for their kids. You know, it's the rand equivalent he sends dollars. But again, what are you sending that money for? You can't be sending money for kids just because you earn a lot. For what? You can take some of that money, you can invest in real estate. You can invest in a share portfolio. You can maybe invest in experiences and say, look, I pay my children school fees. I pay for my kids to eat. And worse, Kim Kardashian makes a lot of money herself. I think the story reads that they split educational and living costs. So they actually split 50-50. So this additional money, what is it for? If you've got extra money, take your kids on overseas trips. Let them see the world. Take your kids to museums and other educational experiences and then invest that money for your kids so that by the time they finish school or by the time they are mature enough, you can say you have got a nest egg. You can now use this money to go to tertiary if you want. You can use this money to study short courses if you want. You can use this money to build a business if you need business funding or you can carry on adding to whatever I'm doing. I have bought you three properties as my child. You now must learn to manage them on your own. Deal with the tenants manage the levies, and, and, and. I've got a share portfolio for you. You must now go on a course to learn how to trade for yourself or to deal with a stockbroker who manages your shares based on your risk appetite and carry on building for yourself. That's what you do with extra money for your children. You don't give it to them. You don't give a child 10,000 rand a month when they're in high school. A lot of these kids don't know what to do with that money. They end up just dishing it at school and they become a blesser. They end up getting up to mischief. They end up Paying kids to beat each other up. I'll give you 500 rand, bro, if you fucking slap that guy. Because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. They get cars. They smash the cars. They're irresponsible. You are just spoiling them and you are destroying their mind. So that is something for us to consider. I need to give a shout out to Katle Hompela, uh, ex-Sundown striker. Sizzling, 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 sizzling. Sizzling striker for his Sundowns. Back in the day when I used to support his Sundowns, I wasn't even a football fan. My father's always supported Orlando Pirates. Uzuela Kefinias Mlocha, Uputrider, from a section four in my and he's passed on 2020. May he rest in peace. My brother's always been an Orlando Pirate supporter. At some point, I find, found myself forced to support a team, and Sundowns was Varam. In those days, I supported Sundowns. Sun, Sundowns is more Varam today under Patrice Motsipe, uh, but I don't support local football anymore. I don't even support national, international football. I used to support Barcelona. Barcelona. I used to support Barcelona when. Ronaldinho and Messi and I think Thierry Henry and Samuel Eto'o used to be there. But I don't support football anymore. I just watch when I can. Mkunz Malanga, my son, supports, I think it's Man City. With Dabo, who are these Man City guys? He's mentioned the names, man. I must go watch them. Uh, Hellgard. Hey, I don't know these O's. I don't know these O's, but he supports Man City. So I'm going to try and watch a bit of football so that Mkunz and I can have some, some lucrative football chats. But to Katle Kompela, man, shout out to him. There were rumors back in 2014 that this guy was the highest earning football player in the country at 300,000 rand a month. 300,000 rand, that's a fuckload of money. Now, at the current tax rates, if, if they take like close to half, he'd be taking home 150,000. Now, if you've got a, an expensive bond, an expensive home, if you've got fancy cars that you have to pay for and insurance and your kids go to private schools and you're living a soft life, that money gets blown quick. Worse if Ndwana, you give a girlfriend allowance of maybe 20,000. You've got maybe three kids that are each at 10,000 rand each school fees. 30,000. Your bond is maybe for a, a one and a half million rand, two million rand house. That's 20,000 20, rand plus levies. That's another 25 to 30,000. Plus you've got a domestic worker. Plus a gardener. Plus. I'm a Chitako. Black tax at home. You're the, you're, the, you're the man of the moment. And then your cars. Ah, Baba Mele, of course. I'm a Mercedes. By the time you look up, boy, you've got no money. And then your career ends. 
He had an amazing interview with Andy Lengube. I think it's Andy Lengube on Metro FM, who does sports, um, speaking about the new chapter in his life because there was a trending story on X where they said he is now a salesman for VW. I think it may be in Pretoria. I'm, I'm not sure. And the story was trending and some people tried to drag him, but luckily many people were defending him, saying, guys, sports doesn't last forever. And shout out to him for dusting himself off and going to find a job. So he did the interview. You guys can go check it out. I think it's available online. And he was speaking about how, you know, he never knew that things were going to go bad. He tried to see Shisanyama at some point. So kudos to him for trying. That business failed. Businesses fail. Um, he said he also tried getting into the tender space. <laughs> he said he saw flames. And then one of his friends was like, look, there's money in car sales. So he's currently, he's not a car salesman, but he's currently um, interning. To become a salesman. He says his life is still comfortable now. So shout out to him. Um, he blew a lot of his savings. Which tends to happen. And he's now in a new chapter of his life. It's a very teachable. Very learning moment for many many sports stars. And not just sports stars. But people in the entertainment industry. You will not always have hit songs. You will not always be the starring in the soapy. You will not always be the fancy striker. Or goalkeeper. Or Life comes at you fast. And some of these guys are not paid as well as you think. Some of the actors in your favorite soapies are earning 20,000 rand a month, like a school teacher. Some of your favorite musicians are charging 5,000 rand a gig. They only get four gigs a month, which is another 20,000. And then when they don't have gigs, they have no money. When your actors are not on your screen, they're not making money anyway. So you need to look for other ways to make money. If you're in the entertainment industry, see if you can learn how to MC. It could be for weddings. It could be for other small events. Get into corporate emceeing. Try and become a speaker, motivational speaker and educational speaker. See if you can train and teach people in your craft. Train kids how to act. Maybe teach at a drama school, whatever the case may be, and earn extra money. And then for, for sports players, while you're in the sports space, network. There are business people there. Patrice Motsipa has got businesses. See if maybe somewhere out there, he can help you get a job when you finish. One of the cool things about the rugby culture in South Africa is that a lot of the clubs are linked to mines, are linked to security companies, are linked to other businesses. And some of the guys that play for clubs also work for a mine or also become security guards or work in some company as admin somewhere. Sometimes if you work for the police force, you also play for the local police rugby club. So they try to make sure that you might be earning 2,000 rand in the rugby club, but then you also earn another 10, 12,000 rand in this job that you have. So the soccer guys need to look into that. There are so many people linked to soccer. There are so many cool, I'm a boss, that own butcheries and shisanyamas and funeral palas and I'm a taxi and I'm a bus and these businesses. So while you're playing football, be like, excess cool. Is it possible for us to get some work? And you must humble yourself for whatever opportunity you get because your career will not last forever. So many soccer players end up in the tavern, depressed. Some take their lives. Also, while you're in the soccer space, Try and get your refereeing certificates. Try and get your coaching certificates. You look at people like Benny McCarthy, Dr. Kumar, I think Mark Fish. These are guys that were football players. You look even internationally, Zinedine Zidane. These guys have become uh, football coaches and managers because they realize the career won't last forever. So you need to start prepping. Same thing happens in rugby as well. Same thing happens in cricket and other sporting codes. Guys, while you're there, make sure that you're coaching, especially at school level. Coach at school level. Maybe get a teaching degree so you, that you can be a school teacher, get paid and coach at schools. And then if you can become a referee and then move up the ranks. And then if you can become a coach and move up the ranks and respect the process. And then, of course, if you can get business interest somewhere about Lucas Khatebe, you look at Siakolis and how he's managing his career now. These are people that can teach us how to manage ourselves. Maybe learn how to speak. Look at Teko Modise as an example. Some of these guys, um, you've got to... Um, Uchabu Pule is another one. And an uncle Legonke who's in the podcasting space with Itiski TV. They also um they also uh, podcast on football. See if you can monetize in another way. Become a, an analyst, become a commentator. You've got Tobane Bobo, Owen Kumane in the rugby circles that are doing those things because there is life after sports. After age 30, after age 35, you're done. And you need a life beyond that. And you mustn't be blinded by the bright lights. Anyways. I've been speaking too much. Katle Kompela, shout out to you, bro. And I hope so many people learn from your story. This is the ex post that I posted. I posted it this morning, 17th of November, 2023 at 6.56 a.m. It's currently on 374 likes, 
14,400 views. I was angry. I'm always angry. I saw a post by Uche Uche Itaba and he's speaking about how the private sector is also corrupt. I'm going to post that on my Instagram at God Penwell. I'm going to post it on my Facebook, Penuel the Black Pen. I'm going to post it on LinkedIn, uh, Penuel the Black Pen, Penuel Mlocho, so that we can teach each other about the corrupt people running this country and how to insulate ourselves from them and how to disempower them and empower ourselves. Cyril Ramaphosa was accused of getting money in weird ways and his bank statements were sealed by the courts. So this post was spurred by what was trending on an ex, allegedly Sifako Mahatu's son, who is in the tender space, allegedly. I don't know who that person is. But they apparently saw bank statements and they leaked, leaked bank statements and it's been trending of money that was sent to the CR17 campaign to fund Cyril Ramaphosa. And I was just upset. Whether it's true or not is, is not important. Cyril Ramaphosa was accused of getting money in weird ways and his banker statements were sealed by the courts. Illegal amounts of undeclared dollars were found on his farm, Palapala, and he was absolved by the South African Revenue Services, SARS, the tax man, the, the SAAB, the South African Reserve Bank, which is our largest banking authority, and other authorities. Chief Justice Raymond Zondo refused to investigate Cyril Ramaphosa further at the State Capture Commission, and he was awarded with the legal top prize to become Chief Justice. The ANC is openly corrupt, and everyone is aware of it. Our SOEs, state-owned enterprises, parastatals, our hospitals, our water plants, our electricity generators are all deteriorating. Big pharmaceutical companies like Aspen in South Africa are part of the global cabal that is forcefully harming people through unnecessary medication with very bad side effects. The banks, our biggest banks that we're supposed to respect, manipulated the rand to dollar and there's no real consequence and the politicians are seemingly not worried and making it a priority. Even if the ANC loses power in the 2024 elections, how do you flush out the filth in state-owned enterprises? At SARS, at the South African Reserve Bank, in the courts, in the media, the mainstream media, etc. The wealthiest people in South Africa are not exposing anything and are mostly quiet because they are eating nicely through government tenders or they supply state-owned enterprises or they are eating privately via government incompetence. You look at Pep Paxi that is making money because the post office has become broken. You look at um, Capitec and Time Bank who are making money because Post Bank is rubbish. You look at who else did I see recently? Virgin Active now is going to be making money. Christo Visa owns Virgin Active. Virgin Active is going to be making money because they've got an attender now to train the South African police uh, services force, which is between 180 to 250,000 police officers. There are so many other spaces. Kuro wins because our public schools are so trash. And, 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 and. Opposition parties. I mean, you look at uh, even now with ESCOM, the number of companies making money from generators, from solar, from UPS, and, and. Some of them, sadly, our politicians have got shares in. You look at private healthcare, for example, medical aid. You look at private hospitals. Our politicians and their business friends make a lot of money because of the incompetence and the corruption and the destruction of government uh, services. Opposition parties are the same as the ANC. They are not hitting the snake at the head. They are not openly stating all the names of the parties running all institutions and regulators. Even if they might, might be racist, even if they might be racist, of which many people say they are, even if they might be racist, I admire Afri Forum and Orania, because Afri Forum tries to offer service delivery to their supporters and they fight government where it affects their people, the people whose mandate they serve, who is the Afrikaner people and the minorities in South Africa. Afri Forum doesn't serve everyone. They serve their people that have given them a mandate. And Orania is a pilot town that is insulating itself from government and going as off-grid as possible. Half of their power per day comes from solar. So they do not even, even need ESCOM for that. So they are insulating themselves, state-proofing, protecting themselves from government. They've built their own schools. They've got their own economy. They've got their own currency called the Aura, which is now, I think, digital going into crypto. Instead of inspiring people, oh, instead of inspiring people, these two initiatives piss people off, largely black people, of course, because of Afrikaner apartheid heritage. 
and they want the same corrupt government to dismantle them. So the same people that are bashing Orania and Afri Forum want the same government, the EFF and the ANC and the DA, to, dis to dismantle Afri Forum, to dismantle Orania. South Africans are largely... Oh, my time is running out. South Africans are largely undereducated, poor, desperate, imprisoned by a salary, captured by tender money, or friends with big political funders. I'm starting to feel like I'm going crazy. One has to unplug from the system as practically as possible, especially from money, because the system we're in is unjust, oppressive, and supported by the most influential people that others complain to. I can no longer take the administration of this country seriously. I cannot respect Cyril and the ANC. I cannot respect big business. I cannot respect the courts. It's best to be a wild man. Pay you all the black pen. Cheers.